People don't want to come out to a comedy club and hear about politics, and they don't want to think, and they don't want you to change their way of thinking, you know, and, and some comics do that, and that's good if that's what you do. But I just, I think of it as a vacation. You come out, you uh, have fun, you laugh, and then you have to go back to your life. We need comedy for those days when instead of hitting snooze, you turn the alarm off, making you late for work. And in your rush to get to work, you spill molten hot $4 a cup Starbucks latte all over a private part of your body. A private part, pal, I know that you named. It feels like the end of the world and I just need a good laugh! That's why you're here tonight. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Margaret Lee's Comedy Castle. Your headliner this evening, let's hear for Dave Coulier. Keep it going for your feature act this evening, Sal D'Amelio. Come on, you can still be an audience. Mark Ridley is like the glue to the entire community of comedians, at least in Detroit. Women can do any sport? Yeah. Except hockey? No. Right? Three periods and two hours. We're not doing that. <laughs> he will take the time to talk to any comic. I don't care if it's your third time on stage and you want to know how you're doing, or if you're somebody that you need a phone number to get help for with an agent in LA. Getting a paying gig at the Comedy Castle in Royal Oak was a big deal for me. It was on a weekday, and then the next step was probably getting one on the weekend. What's your name? Chris. Chris, nice to meet you. Say, for example, you start at 12, but now it's 2.30, and you're bought, coincidentally, the same time that an Asian man goes to the dentist. <laughs> 2.30. Anyway, so, uh, but yeah, pretend like that's not funny, you fucker. That's funny. 2.30. All right, so. The very first place I ever performed was Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle, and it was such a thrill, such an honor to, to be on that stage. I was voted class clown in my high school, so that gives you an idea how much I love comedy. My parents would give me record albums every year for my birthday. For Christmas, I would get Bob Newhart, Bill Cosby, Don Rickles. I mean, these were, you know, I loved listening to comedy albums. That's what I grew up on. So I went to Los Angeles. I started going to the comedy store and the improv that were out there, and I just thought that was phenomenal. Here, I'm, I'm looking at Richard Pryor on stage. I'm looking at uh, a young David Letterman who just moved out there. Uh, good morning, Christopher Titus' room, please. Oh, uh, I don't know. I'm picking him up here. Uh, we're doing radio interviews this morning. Christopher! Oh, morning, man. <laughs> I don't like getting him at 6 a.m. to do radio. <laughs> Good to see you. And I got into show business, so I didn't have to get up this early. What am I doing here? <laughs> Everything all go okay in the pickup last night? Uh, no. The guy, the guy from Metro Cab was just like, he just kept going, what's your confirmation number? I'm going, well, look, just take me to the hotel. What's your confirmation number? I go, what does it matter? Just get us to the hotel. And he goes, well, I want to know how I'm getting paid. I went what? Down, and I'm thinking, what do I look like, a homeless guy? I'll pay you. You know what I mean? No, they are all, you didn't pay him anything, did you? No, in fact, yeah, oh. I made him call I made him call the okay, thing, good. and he, he found it. I so. said, don't you know who I am? And he said, well, I used to when you had a television show. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. I'm working on a new one. Pull <laughs> over. Let me out here. I'm walking. Yeah. Didn't he oh. used to be somebody? Uh, <laughs> no, I was on Fox. <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> I came back here, but always with that little nugget in the back of my mind about a, a comedy nightclub. So finally I just uh, started making some inquiries and went back to a couple of restaurants that I used to work at and said, I've got an idea. And I knew that they had empty space. And I said, the idea is a nightclub for comedians that I picked up in Los Angeles. And it was like one big open mic night. We did that for about a month and a half until I started bringing headliners in. Mark's broke some of the biggest acts in the in the in the country. Tim Allen, huh? Yeah. 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 Who else? Uh, Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Leno. But that's right around the t same time that Tim Allen started doing stand-up comedy. Dave Coulier started doing stand-up comedy. I still remember the the night when you were downstairs. At, was it the meeting, the meeting place? place? Yeah. yeah. The little L-shaped room. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And I had a great set. And I remember afterwards you just saying, hey, stick around, I want to talk to you. And I was like, oh man, what did I say? <laughs> what did I do wrong? You ever do that? You've been waiting in the lobby and picked up a comic, like coming into the hotel? Coming in, or no. Yeah, like walking into the hotel? No, no. Uh, I know guys who are like that, man. I had one one night, well, this was going back, because I used to do the airport runs, yeah. you know, back when money was real tight in the club right. situation. And Gary Shanley and I stayed out all night long. And we, and we were sitting at this hotel room. We were at a small party. After, 
And I looked down at my watch and said, Gary, you have to be at the airport in about an hour and a half. He goes, well, let's take off. And we're driving it about like this time, and, you know, Sunday morning. Oh, oh yeah. So the early 80s, as good as they were from a comedy standpoint, behind the scenes, the business end, you know, there was a lot of hopping around from place to place to place. I've faced near bankruptcy twice, you know, we're almost declared bankruptcy. Uh, I've been in a uh, knockdown, drag out, not only fist fight, but legal battle with one of the restaurant owners. For about nine months, I wasn't even drawing pay from the Comedy Castle. I was working a day job while trying to keep this going at night. All right, so we got one call in and three other ones, three stop Yeah, we got one call in. We're doing the classic rock show. We're doing Purton and the Oldies, and then we're going downtown. Okay. To do today's hit. So we're covering all the all the bases on demographics. You know, I've always looked at stand-up comedy as an art form. There are club owners that don't treat it as an art form, and that's too bad because they're kind of missing the whole point of it. And Mark came up to me one day after he, I headlined, and it was the first club I ever headlined for a whole week. And uh, he pulled me aside after the show, and he said, God, you know, you're, you're really getting good, and I think you're ready to move to L.A. That's another thing about Mark. Mark will actually watch the show. I mean, Mark's doing this big thing. Mark will actually yeah. watch the comedy show and give you notes. I do. I like watching it. Yeah, really but some do. club owners are just like, you did five minutes too long or you did five minutes too short. And... Really? I'm just a frustrated comedian who happens to be a club owner. Exactly. <laughs> I used to MC the shows. I did it for, let's see, when did I quit? <laughs> I quit about 10 years ago. He's here to start off the show this evening. Please wa welcome Mr. Tori Atkins. <laughs> That man has one hot ass. My mother um, played piano for many years here in Detroit, and I knew what she made, and I knew what she had to put up with when she worked. So the one thing that I wanted to make sure of when a comedian came to town is that they were comfortable. If they were comfortable and they knew that they could, that I would hand them that check and they went back to Los Angeles or to New York or wherever and were able to put that check in the bank and it cleared, that they would come back again and they would spread the word. Right now there are a lot of people that aren't in business anymore <laughs> because their check wouldn't clear and they were assholes to the, uh, to the artists. Me and a few guys, I can't even believe how long you've made it, man. You make it through all the hard times, clubs close all the time. Yeah. You just always keep chugging. Mark in here? Yep. 8 and 10 30, right? So Eight and ten thirty. Yeah. Like, see, I think you make What's that phone number there? Uh, I don't know. What is the phone number there, Mark? Two four eight five four two ninety nine hundred. That would be the two four eight five four two ninety nine hundred. And that'd be the Comedy Castle, premier comedy club in the country. I believe it would be. Thank, thank you, Mark. You. Well, I didn't want kids. I didn't want kids. My, me and my mom was mentally ill. My dad, you know, drinking and all these women and, and heart attacks. I'm a genetic minefield. You put my sperm under a microscope. It's like hey. hey, hey. <laughs> but my wife was like, well, if I can't have kids, then you can't buy you can't buy any more cars. And then she said, in fact, if I can't have kids, I want a divorce. And you know, it's kind of at that moment I realized how much I really love cars. <laughs> <laughs> nice whoring, Mark. Good, uh, good whoring in the club. I like that. I'm one of the best. Yeah, you are. <laughs> 24 years of whoring, my yeah, friend. Right. The club's still going. Yeah. I'll be gone by the time you come on stage. You mean you're not going to watch every joke, Mark? I, I've already done that before. <laughs> I did that 25 years ago. <laughs> I love the comedy club business, but, you know, let's face it, I work nights. And, you know, at some point in my life, I'd like to have a life, you know, with my wife and, and enjoy the fruits of our labor. The club will never just take care of itself, but I've got great people that work here. And, you know, I, I trust them quite a bit, and they've been here a long time. You know, some, some of the people have worked up to 17 years for me. You like managing, Mark? Yeah, yeah. I really do. It's, uh, you know what it is? After 24 years of doing this, it's something a little bit different, you know? And it's yeah. To me, the process of opening a club, there's nothing like it. The process of working with a comedian and seeing them evolve into a, you know, a nationally known act would be as satisfying as fulfilling to me, too. Y'all have a good night. Thank y'all. You've got a real high likability factor. You know, the audience immediately likes you, you know, and that's that's what's important. It's not that I'm any more knowledgeable on the, the intricacies of management, but I know where people can make mistakes. Well, what we'll do, and uh, before you leave tonight, I'll get some information and we can get some packages together and tapes together. And, uh... Basically, it's advising them on choices, making connections. Let's face it, I've got 24 years of connections. 
All right, all right, good. Thank you, Chester. Thank you. I'm glad you made it in. Isn't it great to build them up, spend all the time with them, make them famous, and you know, get and them, then get they them. Leave. and then they leave, <laughs> then they sign with Bernstein Gray in L.A. Good for you, Mark. Just down to one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That one's got a lot more bass on it. Can you ride um, volume on it? If when it, cause, I mean, right now with nobody in here. How we do our numbers? Man? You're still doing better than what we did with Jenny. Really? Yes. No way. 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 All right, man. Mark, <laughs> Mark, Mark got me with the way. He totally stumped me. I'm like, wow. I said, buddy.